Guys, to speak to the choir, we got some choir members missing. As you fellas got to hit another gear this morning to make up for those that are missing. And we do have several, several out today, and uh, for various reasons. But I'm sure glad we have you here. Some visitors here. It's always a blessing to have visitors. Amen. And uh, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and, and sing number 283 in your songbook, 283. And we'll stand to our feet in just a few moments. We're going to pray and ask uh, the Lord's blessings on the service this morning. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we bow in your presence, thanking Thee for loving us and saving us, and, and Lord, giving us so much. All your benefits are so wonderful. And Lord, the greatest, the greatest benefit will be that day when we leave this world and join you in a place called heaven. But Lord, until then, we have a purpose here, we, and that purpose is to honor and glorify you to reach the world with the gospel starting right here in our own backyard. Now, Lord, bless the service this morning. We didn't come here just to occupy a pew. We came here, dear God, to worship and the fellowship and hear the word of God preached. We all pray all those things will happen now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet and sing 283. standing let's turn back a couple of pages to 281 281 we'll sing the first second and last of jesus saves amen amen let's sing it out yeah yeah all right let's go now let's go oh we have heard the joyful sound jesus saves jesus saves Yeah. 
give the wind a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout salvation, full of the three, highest hill and deepest cave. This our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Aren't you glad he saves? He's in the saving business. Praise the Lord for that. I sure am glad to see you here this morning. It's a wonderful day. I do uh, miss those who are not here today. And I, don't, I know where some are. I don't know where others are, but I'm glad you're here. I know where you are. And I hope you're not just here in body, but you're here in spirit too, okay? And uh, I was looking through some old, uh, going through some old pictures and found some pictures going way back. And I found some of Brother Jeff Griffin and gave them to his, his uh, son right here. He said, that's him, all right. And... Uh, uh, and then I found one of Robbie Falkenberry ice skating. Of course, he's he's about to fall, and uh, he's fixing to hit hit the, hit the, hit it. Then I found one of Greg ice skating, and them two mopped up the floor. And then this one here is of Matthew, uh, their good friend. He's ice skating, and all three of them's about to about to land. And I'll give those to those you folks before you leave today. And we have here a nice uh, card. Uh, from Billy and Steve uh, Thoming, and that's a, that's a funny last name. That's as close as I can get to pronouncing it. We know them as, as uh, Grandma Billy and Grandpa Steve. They live in Florida, and they tune in every service to our, our, our uh, program here. Just a little a part of our donation for the camp meeting, praying for you and yours health and uh, uh, doing God's work. Love you. And so they sent a, an offering for the camp meeting. How about that? So we'll put that right there. And then also we got a, a thank you note from uh, Brother Lars Kirkland uh, out in Missouri. Uh, we had received an elder's offering for him. He had fallen and broken his leg and had no income and laid up there. And, uh, and so he wrote a nice thank you card. Thank you for your generous gift. And it has been a blessing to us at this time as I cannot work with the cast. I will probably start back to work after the 21st of February. That's coming up. And God bless you and thank you so much, Lars and Joy Kirkland. He was here for, uh, I think, three years. He and his wife in our church worked in our Christian school. And uh, then was a missionary to, uh, what was a missionary to? Scotland. And uh, so anyway, it's good to get that note from them. And it's a good blessing to them. All right, let's see here. Just a few announcements to make. Choir practice today at 5 and uh, they always practice, do good songs. Uh, this coming uh, Friday and Saturday, a revival, weekend revival service over the Victory Baptist Church at 7 o'clock, whether it's Jerome Hodge and the folks over there inviting us to come over. And next Sunday will be their homecoming Sunday. And so you've been invited. Let's just go over and everybody show up and eat all our food, okay? <laughs> and uh, But uh, Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock and revival service. Got a young, young evangelist preaching. I hadn't, never heard this guy. I met him, so it'll be a new one for me. I hope you can get over there on Friday or Saturday at 7 o'clock. And then also coming up pretty soon, it'll be here uh, uh, the first uh, Friday and Saturday of March. Youth Conference of the Gethsemane Baptist Church in Lexington. Last year, uh, junior high and high school kids went to that, and they had a great, great time. It had a little bit of rain, but in spite of the rain, they had a great time, great preaching, great singing, had some great games and activities. And so we're hoping as many will go this year as possibly can go, and uh, so uh, that'll be a great time there. Okay, that's all the announcements, and so let's have the choir to sing. Praise the Lord.
Don't you know that? Heading home. Amen. Let's stand up for a few moments. Speak to each other. recently, maybe last week, last couple of weeks we missed you. I always want to take the time to have you come up here so we can recognize you and sing, sing to you. Sing, we'll sing to you. All right, Miss Joanne and James. All right, Judy. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what now, I thought you was coming on up here, Miss Judy. Anybody else? This these two? Well, Joanne, George had one, but he's not here. George's not here. A lot of folks are not here this morning. Yeah, yeah they're probably out celebrating George's birthday. They might be. <laughs> what you see in there you like, girl? Okay, let's see. There you go. Okay, James? Hey, those are good. I still... Yeah, the chocolate bit of honey. Yeah, you. They, they. Yeah, it's hard to find, but you get them at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> they sell out quick. Fell out quick, I'm telling you. <laughs> when was your birthday? The 13th. 13th, mm -hmm. and uh, I tell you what, you and Joel being just marvel. I marvel at how y'all just keep going and going and going. Don't slow down. Energizer, bunny. Energizer. Amen. <laughs> amen. And James over here, he's just, I told you, about 6'2". 6'2". Amen. One of these days, I'm going to be 6'2". <laughs> uh, I don't think I'll make it, but anyway. <laughs> when was your birthday? Tuesday. Tuesday? How old are you now? 16. 16? Wow. Handsome young man, too, isn't he? Huh? See there? Everybody, mm -hmm, yeah. uh -huh. You got a girlfriend yet? <laughs> One person's applauding. They ain't over here. Amen. Well, she's out there somewhere. <laughs> He's like, yeah, sure she is. Amen. Amen. Let's sing happy birthday to him. Here we go. Happy birthday to God bless you. Amen, amen. All right. Yes, sir. -y. I tell you, these young folks are shooting up there like corn stalks. And uh, I was a corn stalk once, but I was only 5'5 five five corn stalk. And, and uh, my parents said, oh, shucks. That's supposed to be funny. Uh, they'll get it in a minute. You'll get in your car going home and say, oh, I'll get that now. Corn stalk, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. 
All right, well, we do have some other special music we're going to uh, have, have in just a few moments after we receive this morning's tithes and offerings. We do have another special. And so right now we're going to sing another good invita uh, invitation, uh, uh, another song, and receive this morning's offering. Amen. Hey, but all right, let's all stand once again. Turn to page 296. 296, we'll sing the first and last of No, Not One. Amen. Amen. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. Jesus, thank you now. I'm thankful for that song and the message in that song. You refuse no sinner who'll come to you and calling upon you. And Lord, you'll take them in. You'll receive them and you'll change their life. Give them a home in heaven. Lord, we here who are saved, remember that time in our life where we came to you, uh, Lord, with sorrowful hearts and seeking to be saved and with tender mercy and kindness, you, you washed away our sins, came into our life, and we are what we are today because of your amazing grace. Now we ask you as we receive this morning's Lord offering, God, that each of us here be mindful that we're commanded to give, and Lord, but you uh, so much better when we give it joyfully and cheerfully, how much you'll bless it. So Lord, we do that this morning, asking you to help us. In thy name we pray, amen. Amen.
I tell you what, she'll put you to sleep if you ain't careful. If you already sleep, that just makes it even worse, doesn't it? All right, Miss Baker, no one's going to uh, come sing a song for us now. So if you'll make your way over to the piano. And uh, is Noah got a mic over there? Is it already on? It's already on. Okay. Uh, I, was, I filled in this morning for our adult Sunday school teacher, Brother uh, Denny, out of town this weekend, and I filled in for him. I taught a lesson on at your wits end. <laughs> Some of you look like you've been at it right now. You ever been at your wits end? Yeah. These children have got me to my wits end. This this wife of mine, this husband of mine, at my wits end. This preacher of ours has got us at our wits end. <laughs> but really, truly, it's out, out of Psalm 107. You ought to go home and read that psalm. And that's that verse 27. It's a great psalm. And uh, if you get to your wits end, God tells you what to do when you get that. That word wits is a root word for wisdom. When you think you've done all you think you, all you know to do, what do you do then? Well, it tells you. All right, y'all sing. Get close to that mic, Noah. He has given many blessings, caused my heart to overflow. And I knew he watches over me, watches me wherever I go. Let me tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me, how he saved us. My soul has been set free. What a miracle we were given some two thousand years ago. How the Father sent him to us all because he loved us so. Let me tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me. soul has been set free. Let me tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me. How he saved a poor lost sinner. Now my soul has been set free. Amen, amen. That's wonderful. Praise God. You sing a note? Praise God.
God's good. Amen. I can't see them over here, but uh, I always like it when folks sing to smile when they sing, so I don't know if they smile or not. Always adds to it, okay? And uh, all right, we need to hear some more of that, don't we? Get your Bibles out this morning. We're going to take a little journey. And uh, we're going to begin it in the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to deal with the word today. One word, it's the word today. And uh, when you think about today, I, I, I wrote this down many years ago. It's nothing original. I found out that after I'd written it down, I thought maybe it was an original, but I found out it's not, so it's not mine. But uh, you've got to listen to it very carefully, okay? Here's, here's what it says. Today is yesterday's tomorrow. Got it? Today is yesterday's tomorrow. And uh, there was a, a song years ago uh, entitled One Day at a Time. I don't know all the words to it. It was a, it's a good, good song. Lord, help me to live one day at a time. Now, it'd be, it'd be wonderful if each of us here this morning would learn to do that, to live each day at a time. Does that mean that you don't plan for the future? Doesn't mean that at all. Does it mean that you don't look forward till tomorrow? Doesn't mean that at all. But to live each day at a time takes some real doing. Now, here's why. Because uh, I'd be willing to say, uh, if we'd all be honest, that sometimes our todays are more or less consumed of what's happened and what's going to happen. And because we look back and look ahead, we can't enjoy what's now. So it does all the world of good to live one day at a time, do in that day what our responsibilities call us to do, and to be what we're called to be as people of God, one day at a time. And in that day, you can do things and you should do things to, to, uh, uh, that you can look forward to down tomorrow. For example, maybe some of you have already uh, picked out a week this year sometime that you're going to go off for a little vacation somewhere. You've already picked that week out, maybe the destination. But between now and then, you got to live one day at a time. And of course, you may look forward to that. Now, I've found this out sometimes, not every time, when you do go on a vacation and, and it's, a, it's a lot of activity, when you come home, you need a vacation to get over your vacation. You ever been there? But today, what about today? Well, it, it, in this particular, we're going to look at three uh, separate passages that deal with the thought of today. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I read verse number 2. For he saith, he's speaking of God, what God said. He's quoting here from Isaiah 49. Paul is. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. <coughs> Excuse me. Behold. When you find that word behold, you better behold it. Something important is about to be said. Behold, now is the what? Accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So when I look at that, I, my thought is this, that today is the day of salvation. Well, Brother Baker, I've already been saved. Well, it may be somebody here that you're not yet saved. Maybe there's somebody in your family who's not yet saved. Up on our church sign, uh, we have put a little phrase that says, Hail, truth seen too late. You see, a lot of people have the idea that, you know, I'll get saved one day. I'll get saved down the road. I'll get saved when I get older and I can settle down. I've got some real living to do before I get religious. You see, they look at salvation as a religious uh, uh, practice that's going to hinder them from having what they say is a good time. Well, I got news for you. I had some good times when I was lost. I really did. But you know what I found out? I've had a lot better time since I've been saved. I mean, I had some friends before I got saved. But you know what? I've had the best friends after I've gotten saved. 
I had I had some uh, 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 what you might say close friends before I got saved, but I got even closer friends now than I ever had before. Today is the day of salvation. How many here remember the day that you got saved? Do you remember where you were when it happened? Do you know what day of the week it was? Maybe the circumstances surrounded that. Now I realize some people, uh, for various reasons, that they, they say, well, preacher, I can't remember the exact date, but I remember when I was a teenager or maybe when I was 11 or 12. I was at church or, or, or Bible school or I was at a revival meeting and, and whatever it may be. And so you can remember that. How many here uh, of you got saved on a Sunday? Raise your hand up real high. Sunday was the day of your salvation. It's not amazing. How many here got saved on a Monday? Anybody get saved? That was a Monday, Tuesday. There you go. Uh, some Monday salvation. How about a Tuesday? Anybody get saved on Tuesday? Well, I'll tell you what. That's rare somebody gets saved on Tuesday. But you can get saved on Tuesday. How about Wednesday? Anybody get saved on Wednesday? Well, there are a lot more hands. How about Thursday? Anybody got saved on Thursday? How about Friday? Any Friday folks? One. Two. All right, Saturday. How about the Saturday crowd? That's my crowd. I got saved on a Saturday night. Praise God. And that day you got saved. What a day it was. Now, when you get saved, it's not going to just be something that, uh, that just generally happens. I mean, the Lord comes in. He forgives your sins. I remember the night I got saved and, and how I felt on the inside. You can't explain. I tried to, but you really can't. I tried to tell my, uh, my classmates are getting saved. They thought, well, you know, old Baker's got religion now. <laughs> but I got a whole lot more than religion, amen? I got the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart. And you know what? Over the years, I've had the privilege of, of seeing some of my classmates come to know the Lord also. And boy, I thank God for that. I've had some of my own immediate family to get saved since I've been saved. The point is this here. Uh, there comes a time and a place in a person's life that they must be saved. Now, I'm so glad that God is long-suffering and kind and merciful. You see, I didn't get saved on that Monday night of revival. Even though God spoke to my heart. I didn't get saved on a Tuesday night at revival. Even though God spoke to my heart. Nor Wednesday, nor Thursday, nor Friday. It was on a Saturday night uh, that the Spirit of God once again spoke to me. And the preacher preached. They gave the invitation. And after four or five stanzas of just as I am, I left off the back pew. And somewhere between the back pew and the altar, guess what? I got saved. Amen, amen. And my life has not been the same since then. Now, have I been a, have I been the, the kind of Christian that, uh, that I, I should have been? No, 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 no. After I got saved, I did some messing up real big time. I said some things, did some things I shouldn't have said or done as a child of God. But you know what? When I said those things and did those things, there was something that bothered me about it. And it wasn't my conscience either. You know what it was? It's the Spirit of God bothered me. I found out that once you get saved, you can't enjoy sinning. No, no. You might enjoy it just for a little bit, but God's not going to leave you alone. The Holy Spirit's not going to leave you alone when you, when you sin and, and not do the will of God. You know, somebody asked me one time, well, what is sin? And I said, well, you tell me what you think sin is. And they named all kinds of things. Well, sin is, is, uh, is, is, is cursing and, and it's more or less doing things. I said, well, that's true. But there's some other sins too. It's the sin of omission. It's a sin not to pray. You know that? It's a sin not to read your Bible. It's a sin not to come to church. It's a sin to, to hold grudges. It's a sin to, uh, to be unforgiving. The point is, sin is disobeying what God says we ought to do and what ought not do. Sin is just disobeying God. And we all sinned, didn't we? But I found out after I got saved, I still sinned. But I didn't enjoy sin anymore. Well, I found out not doing the will of God would bother me. I wanted to do the will of God. I remember when I first got saved, I'd just taken up golf. Now, I wasn't good at it, but I'd just taken it up. And they was having a tournament there in the town I was living in and over there. And, and they said, you want to play in the golf tournament, uh, uh, James Howard? Said, uh, you might, you, you got good, you might win your division. Now, I live in the lower, lower division, you know, where... You didn't have to be real good. I said, when are you going to play? They said, well, we play. They play on Saturday and Sunday. I said, no, I can't play. I ain't going to play. 
They said, why come? I said, got church on Sunday. Well, you can maybe let you play after church. I said, no, I ain't going to risk it. That's not going to do it. I found out, I, I prayed about that. And you know what the Holy Spirit said? You don't need to be playing golf on Sunday. You need to be home with your family. You need to be in the house of God. What's going to be on your mind all day if you play golf? What I'm trying to say is once you get saved, there's a change comes in your life. Now, here's my question to you. If you say you're saved, you've trusted Christ as your Savior, has there been a change in your life? I'm talking about a change. Now I realize that a person saved in a godly home, a person reared up knowing the, knowing the Lord and the things of God, I realize that there will not be a dramatic change in their life like we, we, we beat somebody who's up in years and doesn't know the Lord. I understand that. I understand that. And I remember when Brother and Sister Marshall's little girl, Becky, I think she was, what, five? Five years old. She got saved. And I said, Becky, how do you know you got saved? She said, Preacher Bucket feels different on the inside. <laughs> Little five-year-old girl got saved. Now, how, did her life change? Not much on the outside, but it sure changed a lot on the inside. There will be a change in your life when you get saved. So if there's been no change in your life, you had not been saved. None whatsoever. If you can enjoy sin and go on in it, go on in it, go on in it, and it never bothers you, I got news for you. You're not, you're not been born again. Oh, I'm glad today is a day of salvation. Not tomorrow, but today. Oh, listen to me. Uh, the apostle Paul was talking, uh, gave his testimony to King Agrippa. He, he was on trial and, and, and his defense was his testimony. And in that, in the, at the close of that testimony, King Agrippa said, uh, Paul, Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost. Almost. Do you realize right now while you're sitting here in this nice, comfortable country church auditorium, there are millions upon millions upon millions, maybe billions of people who are right now in the awful place called hell and one word stands out, tomorrow. They plan on getting saved tomorrow or next month or next year or when they got older. But they died before that day came. Listen to me very carefully. You know this. I'm going to remind you of it. The older you get, the older you get in age, the, the, the salvation experience will not mean as much to you. It's sort of like, you know, when a man works with his hands. When he, and he first start working, he, he, he uses and he works and those hands, blisters come. And, and he has to, but later on, what, what, when those blisters dry up, what happens to his hands? They get calloused. They get rough. They get used to it. Here's what happens. The more a person refuses to trust Christ, the more a per the longer they go saying no, no, tomorrow, later, the more, the easier it gets. And the easier it gets, the colder their heart gets. Very rarely do you hear of anybody getting saved, getting getting saved over 50 or 60 or 70 or in their 80. It happens, but not many. Most people, when they get saved, it's either in their childhood or teens or early years they get saved. And so if you're here this morning and you're not saved, today is the accepted time. He'll accept you today. He'll receive you today. Today is the day for you to get saved. Or by the back, I'm a church member. Whoopie doo. What does that mean? It means nothing. Millions upon millions of Baptists are in hell today, and Methodists, and Episcopalians, and Catholics, and on and on I could go. And they're there because they were hanging on to a church membership, an ideology that, you know, I'm good and my goods go outweigh my bad and, and I, I've got a perfect attendance and I've done this, I've done that. I sang in the choir, taught Sunday school. I was an usher. On and on you could go. I'm telling you, it's not by works that you are saved. You're saved by the grace of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ has died for you. This morning is the day of salvation. Going to church won't do it. Knowing, knowing God won't do it, you got to know. You may know about Him, but you got to know Him. So we understand that today is a day of salvation, not tomorrow, but today. Now, here's why it's so important. We go to our next, go to our next verse of Scripture over in the in Proverbs chapter 27. Now, why is it so important to be saved today? Proverbs, if you'll turn very very quickly, chapter 27. <clears throat> You there? 
Now, here's why you need to be saved today. Verse 1. Why is today the day of salvation? Here's the answer. Proverbs 27, 1. Boast not thyself of what? Tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Today is the day of salvation. Why? Because you don't know what the day is going to bring your way. You don't know what's going to happen today. Today may be your last day here on this earth. Today. There is a day waiting for you to die. Anybody here know when they're going to die? I don't. Somebody said, if you knew where you was going to die, how you was going to die, would you go there? <laughs> I don't think so. We don't know where we're going to be when we're going to die. We don't know how we're going to die. We don't know the circumstances. Oh, you may, hey, you may live to be up in years and, and, and just die of old age. But you don't know what a day is going to bring forth. That word boast, and here's what it means. It means to brag about. Well, you know. I'm going to do this, and I've got this, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to sow my wild oats, I'm going to have my good times, I'm going to eat, drink, and be married, I'm going to have a good time, and then one day, one day, I'll settle down, get married, have some kids, and maybe I'll go to church. No. The first funeral I preached was a teenage boy that I'd witnessed to who said he had, some, he had to do some things before he'd get saved. And that summer after graduating from high school, he died. He was electrocuted. Teenager. But he boasted about what he was going to do all that summer and later in life. And then he'd get in church. You don't know what a day is going to bring forth. You don't know when your last day here is going to be. As a father, a mother, son or daughter, brother or sister, grandparent. I'm telling you, be saved today because you don't know about tomorrow. Don't put off getting saved another day. Then secondly, how about this? If, since you are saved, what are you doing with your life? Is your life doing anything for the Lord? Are you, are you caught up in, in what Paul told Timothy, you know, in the last days there will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God? So easy for a child of God to get, get, get drawn into the affairs of the world, to get drawn into what the world's doing, how they're doing, and their lifestyle, and, and where they go, and what they do, and being all a part of that. That's no place for the child of God. That's no lifestyle for them. I found out that the pleasures of this world, guess what? Uh, you can have all kind of pleasures, and God wants you to have a pleasurable life. He really does. There are some pleasures I enjoy doing. But the Bible says they'll love pleasures more than God. It's not the pleasures that's the problem. Of course, they're Christian pleasures. But it's the lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. And so this morning, if you are saved, thank God. And if you are saved, what about your life? What are you going to do with your life? What's it going to amount to? I had my life planned out. You know that? I really did. When I was in high school, here's I said, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to get me a job, make me some money, have money in my wallet, I'm going to get me a nice car, I'm going to fix it up, I'm going to cruise around, I'm going to get me a, I'm going to get me a good girlfriend, and I'm going, you know, I'm going to have me a time. I'm going to live it up. Had it all planned. <laughs> and you know what? God jumped right in there and messed all that up. But you know what? He messed it up real good. Well, the Got married, and the first car I had was a, well, it's a 60 Chevrolet with the big fins on it. It's white. It was, it was, it was rust with white on it. <laughs> so much for my nice-looking car. But it had a pretty dash. Boy, the dash. I kept that dash really clean, buddy. It's a pretty dash. Once you got in, son, it's nice. <laughs> oh, I got a real good job at the cotton mill. As a dolfer. What is that? Well, it's not a high paying job. My point is, and then God, I finally got a better job, worked my way up and had, had a good job and thought, well, this is going to be it. And then God called me to preach and left that. And here I am today. But you know what? I have a nice car, a nice truck, tr truck and a beautiful, where's she at? She's in the nursery and a beautiful wife. Amen. And a church that loves me and a God that loves me. Amen. Uh-huh, I got about $30 in my wallet. I'm doing okay. 
I give God the glory in it. What I had planned, honestly, I, when I look at my life before I got saved, and you didn't know before I got saved, I had no fear of nothing and nobody. I didn't. Now, for a little guy, that's bad. It is. I mean, I, Mr. Baker and I were talking last night about some of the, the foolish things that I did when I, was, when I was a teenager. Now, had I not got saved, those foolish things would have continued on. Honestly, I believe with all my heart, had I not gotten saved, I'd be dead and in hell right now or in, either in jail one. My point is this. <laughs> be saved, and after you get saved, don't boast about what you're going to do. Lord, what would you have me to do? Young lady, young man, mom or dad. Not, God's not going to call every young man to preach. He's not going to put every young man in the full-time ministry as a missionary. But God has a place for you. And God has a will for your life. And God has a destination for you. He has a path for you. He has a road for you. Hey, and he wants to bless your life. He really does. He wants to raise you up and, and, and meet all your needs and, and you get to know him and raise your kids right in the house of God, hear good preaching and have joy and peace in your heart, have a house, a home to live in. That's what God's got for you. The devil sure ain't going to give that to you. If the devil gives it to you, it won't last long. So today is the day of salvation. Boast not thyself of tomorrow what you're going to do. And then last of all, if you'll turn... Uh, Go back in the Psalms, Psalm 118. <clears throat> Psalm 118, verse 24. Listen to what the psalmist said. The psalmist said, this is the what? Day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad, what? In it. It didn't say rejoice in yesterday. It didn't say tomorrow. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Here's my point to you. Live every day to the fullest of God's will for your life. Live every day taking care of the responsibilities you have as a wife, as a husband, a father, a mother. Live every day obeying your mom and dad when you live home. Live every day when you grow up honoring your mom and dad. You ought to never do anything, I don't care how old you are, that would bring any shame or disgrace on your mom and dad. Amen? Live every day to the fullest. You know what the Lord Jesus said there in John uh, 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 10, 10. Uh, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more what? Abundantly. He desires that you live the abundant life. Now, I thought I was going to live the abundant life when I, before I got saved. But I found out the abundant life of a lost person always has heartache, sorrow, and misery, and death. It really does. But, the, but the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ has promised you and I, he'll always be with us. He'll be there to provide for us and to help us. This is the day that God has given us. You know, I think about today is, is the Lord's day. We call it Sunday. It should be a day of rest and time with the family. It's, it's, it's a, uh, but the day they turn it into a recreation day, they turn it into a holiday instead of a holy day. It's amazing how people waste their days and waste their Sundays. And by me saying that, I want you to realize that all of us are going to give account to God for how we spend our days. You ever wasted a day? Have you? Raise your hand if you really have. You ever wasted a day? I won't look because I don't want to see who you did. <laughs> but I'll just raise both of mine, okay? I've wasted some days. I really have. How many preacher? Too many to count. Well, they say confession is good for the soul. Well, won't you confess it? But here's the thing about it. Don't do it deliberately. Don't do it deliberately. A uh, few days back, I feel like I wasted not a whole day, but a part of a day. I decided I got some things done. I decided the weather was okay. I decided I hadn't, I hadn't done this in almost a year. I decided I'd go play some golf by myself, Brother Robbie. 
Now, you've got to understand. Brother Tommy, I said, I'm just going to go take this a little bit of time. And went up over there and, and got there and by myself. Now, you got to understand, I'm, I'm blind to this eye. And, you know, I'm, I'm good with this eye. But when you play golf, you got to keep your head down. See, you got to keep your eye on that ball. And then after you hit it, you, you do like this. How's that look? Well, when a blind man, a <laughs> blind man, you come down, you come through, you hit, and then you look up. Well, when I look up, I don't know where it's at. I, I don't know where it's at. I lost 18 golf balls. <laughs> I had no idea where they went. But I shot a good round of golf. How could you hit a good round of golf and lose 18 golf? I went and dropped it where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I figured, you know, that's where it's supposed to be, so I just hit from there. Of course, I'd lose that one too. Are you with me? Well, when I got through with that mess, I got back in the truck. It's almost like the Holy Spirit said, you sure wasted some three precious hours. It was a waste of time. To me, it was. Now, you say, Brother Baker, what's wrong? I'm just saying we waste a lot of time in life. I found out next time I go play golf, I got to carry somebody with me. I got to carry some eyes with me. So I asked Miss Baker, I said, come out here in the yard. She's why I said, well, we're going to hit some golf balls. I'm going to see if you can you know, watch them for me. So I teed the ball up. Bam! I hit that golf ball. Kept my head down. And I said, boy, it felt good. I said, where'd it go? She said, I don't know. <laughs> so I can't take her? I might just might as well quit, hadn't I? <laughs> oh, we, we, think that, we look at that humor part about it. But we waste a lot of time. We really do. We waste a lot of time. When's the last time you gave somebody a track? When's the last day you went to see somebody that needed a good visit? When's the last day you said, this is the day the Lord hath done. I'm going to rejoice in this day. What are you going to rejoice in? You'll rejoice in just being saved. Rejoice in the fact that God gave you another day to live and do something beneficial with it. Huh? Each day should be a fruitful day in your life. Each day. I'm not saying it will be, but it should be. Let's don't waste our time here. Let's don't have it in our mind. Well, I'll settle down with God one day. Give every day to the Lord. Give your whole mind, body, soul, and spirit to Him. Because we don't know what a tomorrow is going to be. I went and saw Miss Polk in the, hospital, in the nursing home over in St. George. And she's laying there. You, most of you don't know Miss Polk. She hadn't been in church probably in, I'd say, three or four years. She's one of our widows. And she used to sing in the choir. She didn't miss a service. She came when I thought she shouldn't have come. One time she ran right in that ditch. I don't know how she got out of that ditch. She come flying in through there, missed the driveway. Well, I'm come up through here. I went, I said, Miss Pope, you ran in that ditch. She said, I thought I felt something. <laughs> yeah, he tore half the ditch out out there. And, uh, but she's in a nursing home now. I went by to see her. And uh, I always try to carry a little something. And uh, I sat there and I said, Miss Pope was still praying for you. She said, Preacher, I'd give anything to be in church one more time. I'd give anything to hear, hear sing one more choir special. I just wish I could hear some good preaching. While you can, you better serve God. While you can, you better live for God. There may come a day you won't be able to do anything as far as, uh, as, far as beneficial to the Lord. Live each day. It's the day that God has given. Don't waste it. Give it to a purpose in your life. Get involved in church activities. Get in, char uh, uh, get in charge of the youth and be involved in the youth and help out people because we don't know what a day is going to bring forth. When I was in Bible college, uh, uh, there was a guy there. I didn't know who he was at the time. He was in a wheelchair and he was studying for the ministry. I forget his name. And uh, uh, but I could just look at him tell he had a his upper body was really you know uh, you could tell like he was athletic looking upper body and uh, so we, we was in uh, he was studying for the ministry. And this young man played high school football for Camden. He was a high school all American. 
had two or three major colleges looking at him to play college ball for them. And he's telling me his story. And he says, Brother Baker, he said, I was sitting at a stoplight in my vehicle. And I looked up in my mirror and I saw a vehicle coming. And I think that he is not going to stop. And this vehicle slammed into the, into the rear of his vehicle, which pushed it into another. And he went forward, no, no airbags back then. And, he, and, he, and when he fell over, he realized he couldn't raise up. He's paralyzed from his waist down, just like that. Sitting at a stoplight. So all his hopes and dreams are now gone as far as athletic. From a, from a, 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 a four-star athlete with college scholarships, now he's confined to a wheelchair. And so I got to talk with him. I said, well, how did this affect you? He said, I was angry. I was bitter. I was mad at God and the man who hit me. He said, I lived that way for months, for months. And he said, finally, after many months of this agonizing anger, bitter, ang all this, he said, I finally realized that I got to accept this. So I accepted the fact I'd be like this and ask God to help me. He said, with God's help, I forgave the man who hit me. I forgave God who I thought blamed God. And he said, and now God's called me in the ministry. Now, I don't know where he's at today, but boy, what a good testimony. My point is this. You never know what a day is going to bring forth. You never know. Be saved today. And if you are saved, live for God every day. It's a day which the Lord hath made. Let's rejoice in it. Amen. Miss Betty's going to come and, and play a song. I think we all know it. I want you to turn to it in your songbook, okay? Brother Brian, you come. It's 376 in your songbook. We're going to stand to our feet. I'm going to pray, and we're going to sing this song, 376. While you turn there, if God has spoken to your heart this morning, you need to be saved. Won't you come? I'll take the Bible and show you how you can be saved. If you are saved, don't waste another day. Rededicate your life to God. Live for him. Let's stand to our feet. Lord Jesus, now bless the invitation. Uh, God, I've delivered what you gave to me to deliver. And Lord, I pray you'll help all of us here. I don't know who the first point was for, but undoubtedly somebody here need to be saved. You know who they are. You know where they are. So God, you deal with them. And I pray today they'll push aside their pride, their ego, and come and be saved. And I pray for God's people, Lord, that we'll not waste another day. We'll live each day till it's fullest in your will. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing it. Mind the Lord now. Mind the Lord. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine. For its skies may turn to gray. That's right. I don't worry of the future. Oh, I know. For I know what Jesus said. And Before we sing that next verse, I want you to bow your head for a minute. Miss Joanne has stepped here to come out and pray. Has God not spoken your heart about anything this morning? Has this message just been way over your head? Have you not wasted any days and any time that you look back and say, Lord, don't waste your youth. Don't waste your middle years, your young years as an adult. Honor them with, with the Lord that saved you. Huh? Time's running out. A lot to be done if you're doing it. So maybe this next stanza, God speaks to your heart. You'll come and spend a little bit of time in prayer. Say, Lord, help me not to waste another day. Would you do it? Let's sing that next verse. Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb.
God, this couple here, uh, Brother Sister Flowers, they, how long have you been visiting here now? Six months. Six months? Okay. About a half a year? <laughs> Man, that's a long time. Well, they've been coming, coming, coming. A lot of folks thought they were already members, but they come today to join the church, become members. Isn't that wonderful? And, uh, and as a matter of fact, that like others who come, they say, we, you don't ever mention church membership, joining. I said, well, I'd rather you want to join than me talk into it. And uh, so that's what they're coming this morning. They both have been saved. They've been baptized by immersion. In fact, they'll be coming from a, a sister Baptist church. And uh, you have a son in the ministry. And uh, uh, boy, isn't that wonderful? You've got a boy as a preacher. And they may be coming down sometime March. real March, March. Coming down. Amen. We get to see him. All right. All in favor of second in our church family, say amen. 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 I want each of you now to come by. Give them the right hand of fellowship. Welcome them in. And here's what you do. Give them your name. I know they'll have, they got perfect memories. They'll remember every name and every face. <laughs> no, they won't either. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> What's your name? Hey, isn't this wonderful? Amen, amen. All right, I'll be at the door, and you can speak to them on the way out. But you be sure to come by and speak to this family, okay? Lord Jesus, thank you now for this wonderful day. Lord... <coughs> thank you for saving us oh that great day we got born again Lord help us to not waste a day not to brag about what's down the road but to live each day to your fullest Lord I am so thankful for this couple Lord thank you that you've sent them our way we sure want to use them here for the glory of God be a blessing to them as they are to us give us many days and years together to honor and glorify you in thy name I pray Amen